Hi, I'm Miyok Ikaro, and I'll be reading from my piece, Queer Soul. I stepped through the glass doors into the trendy bar, adorned with an entire wall studded like a darkly lit twister board, and suddenly remembered that I hated gay bars only slightly less than straight ones. It felt disorienting to be inside a bar at all, so to be in a gay bar on the other side of the world crossed over to the surreal. I looked around at the few couples sitting at the dimly lit tables and booths and noted the K-pop crooning from the dark corners of the ceiling. It was utterly queer. I took a seat at the bar, glanced at the menu, and instantly ordered, Omija mojito, no alcohol. While my drink was being mixed, I stepped outside for a smoke, where a young, ravishing girl sat, saying something incomprehensible and motioning for a light. I don't speak Korean, I stated flatly as I lit her cigarette, trying not to stare. She appeared to have stepped straight out of the 90s, a Korean Audrey Horn from Twin Peaks, with her short, wavy hair, leggings, and silk top under a blazer with more shoulder pads than an episode of Lois and Clark. Maybe I am into Korean girls, I reconsidered as she exhaled a cloud of smoke under the cold flicker of electric blue lights. She stared knowingly at me, considering my presence while her cigarette stained lipstick red on one end and burning scarlet on the other dangled in her hand. How do you speak English so well? She asked. How do you speak English so well? I echoed. I teach English. She spoke with a slight accent before breaking into the laugh that belongs to women who know they are beautiful. Happy to be in a position to chat up a girl, I engaged her. Where did you learn it? I've taken it all my life in school, she inhaled. And a long time ago, my parents moved to Brooklyn for one year, but I was very young nine years old. Her eyes stayed fixed on me. What is your name? Miyok. Hmm. You don't hear that name much anymore. You don't hear it at all in the States. She smiled coyly. You are American? By nature, not by birth, I nuanced as I packed my bowl with tobacco. I like your pipe. We don't have those here. It was true. All of their tobacco shops were riding the vaporizer wave and selling candy-flavored cigarettes long outlawed in the West due to their appeal to children. Can I see it? I handed it to her as she fingered it gently. It's a nice pipe. It's British, I said out loud, immediately regretting it. It's British, I mocked in my head. Good one. She laughed as she handed it back to me. What do you do in America? I'm a writer, or trying to be. I looked away, insecure. I wasn't published anywhere, had just started a graduate program at the age of 37, and had, well, less than nothing going on before that. Ah, so you are writing a book. That's the idea. I spoke quietly as I leaned in to light another cigarette. What is it about? Her mouth, painted too red, seemed to shape the air as she formed her words. It's about my life, I recited, like an idiot. People say it's an interesting one. She gazed out at the quiet alley, hidden from the rows of night food, bass beats, and throbbing bodies in the next street over. My life is not so interesting. Well... You are gay in a country that doesn't approve of it, I offered. Who doesn't approve? She asked, offended. I read that at Seoul's Gay Pride two months ago, there were more protesters than queers. Oh, that. She waved the air as if brushing away the ignorance. You don't think being a queer person here is interesting? I protested. It's so taboo, I thought. I was completely confused why she was so blasé about the whole thing. I thought of my first date in Korea with a 34-year-old professor who had suggested Mong to me a few nights before over text. 
though she had been too afraid to ever come here herself or any gay bar in Korea. I just live my life queer, as you say, she exhaled. It's no big deal. Are you out to your parents? She dropped her cigarette on the pavement and stamped it out with her stiletto, her eyes growing wide and incredulous. Of course. Really? But that's unusual, isn't it? I pressed. Hmm, she hummed as though she were falling asleep. I like you. You seem like a writer. She then stood up and walked over to the door, expecting me to follow, which I did. We sat in the dark, sipping our drinks, when she suddenly hopped off her bar stool. Someday I hope to read your book. I have to go now. Then she strutted over to the entrance where a tall and dashing woman entered, as handsome as any K-pop star, and together they disappeared into the shadows of the bar while I faded back into obscurity. Moments later, D tapped me on the shoulder. Shit, dude, sorry I'm so late. This place is a bitch to find. She took a quick glance around. It's weird to try to find a place that sort of doesn't exist, you know? She set down her bag and looked up. What are you drinking? After ordering her first round, Dee swung around to stare out into the darkness of the lounge. Damn, this bar is tame. Not really a place to meet the ladies, she observed, picking up that everyone in the room was in a couple. When the butch bartender came back with her martini, she asked, Is there a dyke club that's like a party? Thank you. <laughs>